Recently, I was reading the VintageComputer.com forums, and I came across a post by the Great Hero Fan, asking if anyone had made a color computer digital joystick adapter. He linked to an article with a circuit, and I thought, hey, I might be able to build that. First, a word about the color computer's joystick interface. It is less joystick and more double paddle. Joysticks of the time were usually built as four switches. But the designer of the color computer didn't want to limit the machine to just four switch interface. They decided to include hardware necessary for an analog to digital converter. You see, each joystick is actually a pair of potentiometers. They divide a 5 volt signal coming from the cocoa. Then the cocoa digitizes the analog voltage. It produces a value from 0 to 63 for each axis. This arrangement and the joysticks produced by Radio Shack turned into a neat compromise. Having a combo paddle joystick came in very handy for games like Double Back. Or Polaris. But sometimes one wants to get their arcade on. For games like Megabug and Canyon Climber, the long throw of the Radio Shack joystick can make their experience subpar. I decided to build the adapter. I gathered up all the parts and built a breadboard version of the circuit. This was successful, so I moved on to preparing the box. If the D-Sub 9 plug is mounted to the outside of the box, a lot of hole cutting error can be hidden. But I wanted to mount the D-Sub connector on the inside of the box. This requires a near perfect hole to be punched through the aluminum. No problem. We make cutting dies at work. Well, we make paper and cardboard cutting dies. I asked our operator if he thought a small die could be made to punch aluminum. He said it was worth a try. The first step is to draw the outline in a vector program, then transfer that to a system that will bend the steel rules. And another machine that cuts slots in the backer board. Then the steel rule is pressed into the backer board to complete the die. I decided to use a vise to punch through the aluminum face of the box. I made the mistake of using wood to put pressure on the back of the face. It was too compressible and the aluminum pillowed. But after some cleaning up with a hammer, I was happy with the result. Then I rebuilt the circuit on a perf board. This is where I decided my soldering skills were not suited for such a small box. Also, I must remember to buy quality IC sockets. The cheap ones I have seem to repel solder. Now I can play Megabug and Canyon Climber the way the programmers never intended, digitally.